Hey guys, what is up? Red Panda Mining here. How you guys all doing? I hope you're all doing well and having a great day. In this video, I want to talk about Ravencoin and their algorithm change from the current X16R to X16R V2, which will happen on October 1st of 2019. And for the rest of the video, I'm just going to be talking about why they are moving to X16R V2. And I have some speculation and some information, screenshots, what have you, regarding to ASICs and also some new FPGA bitstreams for X16R, which I believe isn't private anymore. I believe it is public knowledge. So we'll talk about that as well as some information, some correlation between the Ravencoin price and the hash rate. Now, I want to thank Bitsby Trippin for this announcement here, this Twitter post regarding the X16R V2 announcement. So if you guys haven't followed Bitsby Trippin already, which I'm sure most of you guys are already following him, go, go follow him on Twitch, Twitter, and his YouTube. He is our crypto mining OG, crypto mining lord and savior for the crypto mining community. And I appreciate this guy so much. He is super knowledgeable, and I'm sure you guys also know that already. So... Go check them out. All right, now let's talk about the X16R V2. X16R V2, they're basically adding a, a another algorithm called Tiger. So they're adding into three separate parts of the current X16R algorithm. The Tiger hash is performed before the algorithms is going to be performed uh, before these three algorithms here, Lufa 512, Kesak 512, and Shaw 512. So interesting. If some of you don't know already, there's 16 different algorithms uh, currently on X16R, and I'm gonna try to name all these all these hash hash hashing algorithms. I'm gonna try to name all of these algorithms here, so I'm probably gonna butcher a bunch, but let's go. There's Blake, BMW, Grolst, GH, Kesak, Skine, Lufa, CubeHash, Shavite, Simd, Echo, Hamzy, Fugue. Shabal, Whirlpool, and SHA-512. So these are the current 16 algorithms that are on X16R currently. So if they are adding the Tiger hash to this, I'm assuming there's going to be now 17. So wouldn't it be X17R? Who knows? Anyways, now for the rest of the video, guys, I want to talk about why, potentially why Ravencoin is moving to this new X16R v2. Now, I have a, I guess this is not a screenshot, but this is on a website, um, of a announcement of X16R ASIC. Now, it's in Chinese, so I'm going to try, I'm going to do here Google Translate. It's in simplified Chinese, so I'm just going to translate it to English, and yeah, it looks like it worked. And it says here, ASIC mining machine is about to go online. Where is Ravencoin going? Okay, so I guess this is just a, a blog post regarding uh, the ASICs, an ASIC for X16R. So it looks like there is, potentially, and there it shows that there's three different ASICs right now for X16R. So they show a o, an OW miner, which does 250 mega hash, I believe, at 1500 watts. Okay, they said it's making about $3.66 a day. Then there is an SKC miner, Turing R1 for X16R, and it does 680 mega hash at 800 watts. Wow, so this is what, like way better efficiency at $14.29 a day. That's probably changing every time. And then they show a RTX 2080, which does 31 mega hash at 16 at uh, oh, sorry at 220 watts on the x16r algo currently so <laughs> they show here ROI two, two, 2073 days and the ROI for the SKC miner is 108 days uh, for this uh, ASIC x16r so whether or not this is true it seems like this information looks to be true I'm not sure but take it with a grain of salt. This could be why one of the biggest reasons why uh, the Ravencoin dev team or community is wanting to move away uh, from the current X16R algo because of these ASICs, obviously. So take that as you will, guys. One of the big proponents of why most coins, some proof-of-work coins, move away uh, to a new algorithm. 
it's just because of ASICs. Okay, now I wanted to also show the mining pool stats information here that there is some information regarding dark pools, okay? In quotations, dark pools. So what I mean by that is pools that are not listed on anywhere or people don't know who they are because they could be private pools or private or solo uh, institutions, firms, whatever, people with lots of money that have huge farms, whether that be these ASICs or, you know, potentially FPGAs. Because on mining pool stats right now, it shows that there's 36.7% unknown of the network hash rate. So they really don't know where 36% of the hash rate is, is from. And also there's 36 blocks that are unknown uh, to the network right now. We don't know where they're going. Obviously we know where the, we know, we'll probably know which network addresses are getting those blocks, but we don't know who controls those addresses. And potential, there could be, you know, ASICs or FPGA farms, okay? This is just pure speculation on my part. I did make a video regarding a Alum S1 FPGA, which does 60 mega hash at 70 watts on X16R. This was back in May 13th of 2019. And I have reason to believe, yes, there are FPGAs. There are obviously FPGAs now that are on X16R. Whether or not that is you know, big FPGA farms. I'm not sure. We don't know. There is a video from the technicals from Matt. Good old Matt. I love this guy. I wish he would make more videos, but uh, I'm sure he will very soon. Uh, if you guys don't know, he made a video regarding secret FPGA crypto mining farms, and he made this back in January 4th. You know, now it's August, so I'm I'm interested to know if now FPGAs, there are huge FPGA mining farms in like China or Russia or anywhere because, you know, as we know, FPGA chips can be programmed, right? And there are obviously probably secret Bitstream developers out there that are willing to, to get paid thousands, if not maybe hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars even for a private Brit Bitstream that no one else can access and mining a coin that we don't know that could have FPGAs on it right now. And obviously we don't know if there could be huge FPGA farms out there. I, I just I just have a feeling that there is and I'm very curious to see what's going to happen to the X16R algorithm, uh, X16R hash rate, sorry, uh, seeing how much it's going to drop off once it does the switch. and. I have a screenshot here from a subscriber who sent me this screenshot regarding Bitstream updates from a secret Bitstream society. I have absolutely no idea who, but it shows here that the Altered Silicon and Whitefire, I believe these are two Bitstream developers or companies, uh, that they are releasing the X16R Bitstream soon for the BCU 1525 and the CVP 13. So they said on the BCU 1525 it will do 100 to 110 mega hash at about 150 watts. Okay. Now I guess this just came out a couple days ago because I just got emailed this this week. So it's funny to know that if Ravencoin they're just releasing this new bitstream I guess for the BCU people for the FPGAs a month before the algorithm is going to be changing to X16R v2. How long did it take for the FPGA developers to release this bitstream to the public? Obviously, a month before the X16R v2 is coming out, which is kind of shady. I I don't know how many people in the public had X16R already for the FPGAs, their current FPGAs. I would like to know if there's some FPGA people watching my channel. Um, I would like to know if you already had an X16R bitstream, you know, maybe since January or earlier, because it seems like X16R for FPGAs have been released or have been created for a long time now. Uh, I know Altered Silicon had it for a while. I think there was an announcement in, I believe, January that they are able to mine X16R on the BCU 1525. And you can see here on their website, if you wanted to get the Bitstream, all you had to do is sign up. And if you have a, 
uh, BCU 1525 and some other requirement uh, in order to get the bitstream. x 16 rv 2 is it going to be available for FPGAs come October 1st? And there was some Discord message here that I saw on the FPGA Discord uh, community. They said, someone asked, since Raven is hard forking to x 16 rv 2 is the new algorithm going to be supported? And uh, there's a guy named here, Play Hard. I believe he's from Squirrel. I, I couldn't find out who he's from, but he was one of the verified FPGA staff. So he says here, yes, we'll be ready when the fork happens. We are working very closely with the Raven community to make sure FPGAs are supported for any future updates as well, which will for sure come. So I don't know what that means if the x 16 rv 2 is going to be supported come October 1st. I don't know. We don't know. We will see what will happen to the hash rate come October 1st. So here is the Ravencoin network hash rate currently. And now for the rest of this video, I'm just going to do some correlation here between the price and the hash rate just to give you guys some, some information here uh, as to why or potentially why the, the hash rate just jumped up, you know, significantly. So let's take a look at October 22nd, for example, okay? October 22nd, the price, the price action here uh, in Satoshi value, let's say... Ravencoin at the time was 927 Satoshis, okay? And Ravencoin network hash rate at that time was around 6, six, six terahash, okay? But take a look. This huge jump, I would say a couple weeks before a big rise up, looks like it was about 2.3 2 terahash uh, starting on October 9th. And as well, you guys can see here the price action October 9th. Uh, Ravencoin was 229 Satoshis. So from 229 to 927, really big opportunity cost here for those that were uh, mining Ravencoin earlier. So uh, if you guys traded into Bitcoin during that time and it, obviously the price action, the price of Ravencoin dropped off in the coming months after, uh, you would have made a lot of Bitcoin um, for that. And then another opportunity cost you guys can see here in the next rise up on, let's see, February, end of February to March 28th, uh, where Ravencoin was 1,572 Satoshis. That is very high. And you can see here that same time, March 25th, March 24th, Ravencoin hash rate jumped up to 13 terahashes. And the price of Ravencoin has dropped off considerably, but it looks like the hash rate hasn't really gone down that much. But now, if you look at the price, like let's look at Satoshi value, your opportunity cost here, look at this, 1,600 Satoshis, now it's down to 345 Satoshis, or 359 Satoshis as of making this video. So look at that, the price has dropped in terms of USD price, though, uh, from six cents to about, let's see, three cents. Okay, so it's in half in USD value, but Satoshi value, it has been traded into into Bitcoin, uh, <laughs> a considerable amount. So, my conclusion here is: Are these FPGAs or ASIC farms still operational right now? Yes. My conclusion into if the hash rate network hash rate is going to drop off uh, October first, in my opinion, yes, I would. I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's gonna drop down to maybe five or four terahash. That that's my prediction. Maybe more. Who knows? And uh, to end off this video, guys, I said I would talk about the squirrel acorn uh, stuff. If you made it this far. So let's just see here. They're saying the squirrel miner is not released yet due to the IP, the legal, there is still in the legal squabble that has prevented us from having access to the code for the Acorn GPU assist. So really nothing new. This is still the information that I talked about back in, I believe, January or February. I don't know if any of you have them or are mining with them. I would like to know, but I would like to get some feedback about what you guys think about Ravencoin Network currently 
and what you think about the FPGAs, um, some secret mining farm stuff, and uh, the ASICs uh, that could potentially be on the network right now. And let me know what you guys think. I appreciate you guys for watching and smash the like button if you guys like what I'm doing and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one and peace out.